we are on to our next Ink Her webinar. And I would like to uh, welcome Spriti Goel, our mentor today, who is going to take us through a very interesting uh, concept. Uh, before that, let me give a brief introduction about Smriti. Smriti Goel is a learning and organization development professional and an executive coach with 21 years of international experience in Asia, Middle East, and Africa. Smriti is passionate about making a difference to the women community. As a trailing spouse across three different continents, she has personally faced many hurdles in building her career and balancing work and family life. She has leveraged her personal and cross-cultural work experience to successfully coach and mentor many women internationally, both in their personal and professional life. Uh, thank you, Smriti, for taking your time out for um, the Inca community today and to tell us how we could mine gold. It's all within us. Over to you, Smriti. Uh, a few pointers uh, to all the audience. Uh, please keep yourselves on mute and the video camera off. Uh, we will have a time allocated for question and answers after the session is completed. Uh, at that point in time, uh, whoever has a question can raise their hands and we will unmute them and you can ask the questions, but they will answer it. This particular webinar also gives you a wonderful opportunity uh, in terms of uh, two of uh, the participants today will get uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Spriti after this program. Uh, so please participate uh, because we will uh, definitely uh, look at the participation and uh, then decide who those two women are who uh, will get that opportunity. So over to you, Spriti. Thank you, Nirja. Um, welcome, everyone. Great to have you all here. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And um, before we begin, uh, we will all have to be patient just in case there's a technical glitch side for us all to come back. Um, okay, and here we go. Okay. So, so um, I've chosen this topic with a lot of care, uh, mind for gold uh, within you, because I believe that each of us, all we need to do. I'm going to invite you to um, share some of, uh, so I may, we may not be able to get the inputs verbally, but I'd like you to do some work. So I hope everyone has a paper and pencil with them. Um, to you know make some notes or write some things uh, because that's how it goes in a webinar for those of you who are um, doing it for the first time um, so let's uh, let's begin and I want to begin with the Peruvian fable um, I don't know if anyone of you has been to Peru but you must heard of Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is the highest peak. So this fable comes from the land of the Incas. So the ancient Peruvians, they believe with the world around them and they believe that every living consciousness and it needs to be accepted and uh, respected. And they hold three animals very sacred. So, so they believe that Um, as the snake uh, uh, sheds its dark side every um, dark side by shedding its skin, mature and wiser. And they felt that the Peruvians, if that were not useful to them, and um, you know, address some of uh, the difficult questions in life that we all struggle with at times, and. Um, learn some, learn, change the way they thought and behave, then they would learn something new and they would raise the level of consciousness. So these three, I forgot to say, these three animals rep represent the three different level of consciousness. Um, the second one is the puma. The puma is, uh, is the master of the Amazon forest and it's known for its adaptability, 
for its keen sense of sight, smell, and the hearing, and it develops those to be able to survive on those difficult conditions. So what it does is it, um, it, it, it um, is able to live in very cold conditions as well. It has a thick skin, so it's able to withstand those cold temperatures. It also has a long tail, which allows him to keep balance. So the puma represents the quality of strength, of courage, of determination. And they again felt that as human beings, if you want to survive in a, in a, on earth and be able to deal with all the challenges that come to us in life, um, if we develop the adaptability and have the strength and the courage and the determination to focus on uh, when we need to, then we can again raise our level of consciousness. And then the third animal that represents that's very sacred to them is the condor so the condor is um, it's the largest bird it has a wingspan of 10 feet and it's on the mountain and surveys the uh, earth below and with wisdom and maturity and the, and the Incas believe, the Peruvians believe that to uh, experience growth and to um, go snake and be able to change our mentality and therefore continuously what you want to be and therefore experience growth and fulfillment so why do i bring through transitions in life we go through so many changes and particularly women and because we take on so much responsibility we have the primary responsibility of childbearing of childbearing and a lot of you have mentioned that as one of the reasons why you took a career break so we, we how can we handle some of those difficult questions how can we take inspiration from some of this and develop the strength and the quality of this? So I'm going to um, share with you. I hope so. I hope this resonates with you. We will take a little bit of time in between and get some comments, observations in. Um, I hope this resonates with you. I'm going to share some of the um, concerns that you've raised and that that stopped you from growing in your careers some of you a lot of you have mentioned about family about balancing work and professional uh, professional and personal life um, personal responsibility some of you have mentioned you know doubt lack of skills um, some of you have also mentioned about not wanting to deal with office politics and or not having the wherewithal to deal with it and some of you mentioned other reasons. So if you look at all this, what are we really trying to address in mind for goal within you is how can we find answers to some of these things that are facing us today? Because the fact that you are here today um, tells me that you are seeking some answers. So at that point, I'd like to um, ask you a question. Why are you here today? And you may, you can put it in the chat box if you like, and Nija can feed me some, some of those, um, um, you know, important points that you're putting in there, or you can write it with yourself. Take a moment and think about what would you like to take away from this session that will help you find your path towards growth and fulfillment. And I'll, I'll give you a minute or so to think about it. So, Nija, if something is coming up and you want to share, if people are writing on the chat box, yeah, I don't please, see anyone uh, writing. You can yet. voice it here. People, please do uh, write down your expectations in terms of why have you come to this webinar today. Okay, so Venita says, how to overcome some of the challenges which are self-limiting. 
Mamta mm-hmm. says confidence and motivation. So I'm guessing uh, she means how to be confident and how to derive motivation to go ahead with what you want to. Any other expectations that mm-hmm. people have from today's session? And also, um, Mirja, they don't have to share it. They can just keep it for themselves. It's sure. for them to have a context to all the uh, learning that we will have today. Uh, that's, that's the purpose. So I'm going to move on now. Yeah, um, one last one. Megha says, my objective is to keep myself up to date. As I know, I will not be able to work for a few years as we are moving out of the country. Okay, let's go ahead. Oh, okay. okay, great. Right, thank you. Um, so the takeaways from today's sessions, which I hope you have, uh, if you, you get um, some, uh, you know, insight into, is why handling yourself out is important. Therefore, we need to kind of address them. How can you, what can you do to feel empowered? So what is the strength? If you're not getting it from your outside, from circumstances, from environment, how can you find it within? How can you take responsibility for your growth and fulfillment? Because ultimately, um, everything boils down to me, I, and myself. <laughs> so um, let's, uh, so this is in short, this is the, sorry, is somebody saying something? No. Please go okay. ahead. I'm going to go on um, setting. So we are going to look at the wheel of life. Some of you may be familiar with it. We are going to look at basic human needs. We are going to talk about, I want to, if you already don't know, I want to talk about the concept of liminality. And I want to see, I want to discuss how we can leverage our strength. And there's a little story I want to share with you before we wrap up. So um, are you familiar with the wheel of life? If you're not, um, wheel of life is really about all the key areas that are important to us in our lives. So what I want you to do is to draw a circle and make six to eight sections. If eight is too much for you, you can stay with six. And it take a moment to do that. Write the key areas of say, professional or personal. You can say you can take each child in two separate sections if you wish to. You can talk of health, fitness, spirituality, even a hobby that gives you a lot of satisfaction. You can term it under personal time. You can talk about your creative endeavors. Anything that's, that's a key area of your life, put it against each triangle. Take a couple of minutes to do that. So I'm going to go ahead. If you need more time, uh, you just indicate on the chat box and I will uh, paste it accordingly. Now imagine there is a scale of 0 to 10 on each triangle. And then shade them from the center to the outside to represent the time and effort you are spending in that area. Okay, so it should look somewhat like this. Uh, is, if anybody has a question, please put it in the chat box. I would relate to, relate to me. Okay, now if you are done, you will see, and if it, if this is how most people's wheel of life looks like. And this represents, the shaded area represents the amount of time, your time and effort you're spending in that area and where you are not spending. Now, since you have listed it as a key area of your life, it's likely that you would like to spend more. So you also know that a wheel which is, skewed like this, which doesn't have balanced spokes, is not likely to roll very smoothly. So for us to have balance and smoothness in our life, we need to spend some more time and effort in some of the areas, maybe not all of them, like, um, uh, was it uh, Megan who said that, what is it that she wants to do in the meantime? So circle, circle those had headings which you want to change. So just take a moment and think about where you want. I have basis on what Tony Robbins, he's a, he's a speaker, motivational speaker, and he has done work with some 3 million people. And he says, 
he has concluded that that human beings are motivated by the desire to fulfill six core needs and these needs are not just wants and desires it's not like i want to build a house it's not want it's about i need this and they are basic they are, are they, they they are important to us for us to feel whole and complete and being aware what i'm hoping is that once you go through this you will have a better awareness of why you make certain choices and are you addressing them in a resourceful way or in a unresourceful way and by knowing having a more knowledge about this you can become more resourceful in addressing these needs so the first four needs he talks about is the needs of the personality so the first thing that is is the need for certainty the need for safety all of us want to know that where our next meal is coming from we need to feel secure we need to feel safe we need to have maybe some kind of comfort that is our minimum threshold we need to have a certain level of predictability in our lives so if i know that today i know i have food to eat and tomorrow i don't i'm not going to be um, uh, i mean it's not going to keep me uh, my needs will not be met the other need is of the second need is the need for uncertainty isn't that paradoxical that while we have a need for predictability and control we also have a need for uncertainty if i fed you khichdi for the rest of uh, your life i'm sure you will make sure i'm the enemy so uh, you we, we, we all need we have a need for diversity variety surprise change novelty and and this is an area when we have when we fulfill this need we evolve we grow and uh, it helps us to um, you know grow, grow a sense of identity of ourselves so and if you see the need for certainty and uncertainty work together so while they are paradoxical so uh, for example if somebody is has a has had a baby and i remember those days when i had a baby and i had to escape this because i i was always in the house looking after the baby it was just like some demanding uh, thing that i had never experienced before and i uh, so um, i had this need for wanting to go out so if you if there is imbalance in one side one can actually um, you know balance it by doing something different so we Took, uh, when our daughter was two month old, we took a break um, to a, a little weekend break, and it kind of settled things. It brought me to equilibrium for at least a certain time. The third need is of significance. The significance is it's a need that satisfies our need to have. It fulfills our need to have meaning, to have pride, to be needed, be needed and wanted, to be part of a bigger whole, to um, have. you know to be recognized for what we are and this is also linked to we need to be validated now um the other need is the need for connection which is a uh, need for comfort need for love we need to know that we are loved and our love is returned in fact there is research to say that for each human being every human being needs at least one person who loves them unconditionally for us to feel secure in this world and again significance and connection work together and they so if you are too focused on significance for example one is in one aspect uh, it could be that you're too focused on your job then you may not find time to make those deep connections with people that you uh, you know love because you say yes i love you but i need to go there and the what it doesn't uh, feel authentic to the person for whose Uh, life um, who who is important to you and you are important to them um need for significance um also sometimes it's about validation right but sometimes we can be too focused so when we over satisfying this need for significance it we can look for validation from outside all the time and that's not okay too because um we need to uh, we need to have our own path uh, to 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 growing and evolving and it's not necessary that one person who uh, who's of approval you are looking for if that doesn't come that that doesn't mean that you're not growing as a human being 
the other um, I, I, um not being bound by the need for certainty actually worked very well for me and um, so you know we were in gurgaon and my, we lived there for 6 years my children were going to a wonderful school the shri ram school and you know how difficult admissions are in delhi and um, i had my work i was working with a wonderful set of people and then my husband gets the job of going to nigeria and managing a company there and um, as as a growth uh, uh, role and um, so and you know nigeria is known for <laughs> lack of safety and lack of security and we used to even hear stories about how people had to keep deep freezers so that they had food to eat in fact there were times when there was no fuel so we went for a recce and i saw how my husband's mind was working i could see the wheels whirring in his head about how he could grow business and while i i spoke to other people and said why do we need to go there we have a perfectly good life here but i zipped my mouth because i just felt that i needed to do this for him and we went there and you won't believe it i, I found a job with kpmg there till date that has been the most wonderful assignment of my life um i got to work with people with whom i'm still friends and it gave me so much confidence because i don't think anybody in india would have given me an opportunity in kpmg at that time um i i got so much confidence that now whatever changes come i that confidence never goes away and i'm able to you know ride on the uh, strength of that confidence and able to handle if i had been too controlling and not going with the flow i would have lost an opportunity to evolve to you know to de- so sometimes going not controlling too much and going with the flow and being uncertain being part of uncertainty or gives us lots of opportunities so that's one um so i hope that gives you a little bit of insight as to how these needs work for our for us or against us so there is challenge in handling our um human needs and there is also positive aspect of handling our needs and the two other needs which uh, tony robbins talks about is the need of the spirit the need to of growth so he talks about how each one of us need, if every every microorganism needs to grow if it ceases to grow then it will stagnate and die and similarly we have emotional needs intellectual needs and we need to grow if that stagnates we feel like we are vegetating and the other need is the need for contribution the need to give care protect and you know be beyond ourselves um, um be more for others be able to serve society and community in fact uh, there is one question on quora i don't know if you've come across it and they said that why is it that i am rich i have achieved my goals i have done so much people know me but i'm still not happy and there is a very good answer and there's a lot of research going on on this that our brain when certain needs are fulfilled our brain releases certain chemicals and to it is if i i can actually i if we had time i would have linked it to some of this but those chemicals are released when these needs are fulfilled and that's why you see billionaires once they've achieved all the wealth that they wanted to they've been highly successful they can, they still get happiness by ultimately a contributing to society so i guess bill gates bill and melinda gates foundation is an is is a uh, answer to that the thing is that sometimes we can meet these needs resourcefully and sometimes we can meet them unresourcefully for example um a need for significance can be met uh, either by you know playing a vic tim or always letting our husband know when he comes i'm sorry i'm taking this example doesn't need to be that is for you but let's just this is seems to be a common phenomena could be a common phenomena that your husband comes home late and you play a victim or you play a martyr that oh i'm the one who's doing all the time looking after children or you know you could be uh, spending more time uh, gossiping with someone and uh, uh, that may give meet your need for significance but is that resourceful on the other hand one other example of um, you know significance could be you go and do some volunteer work that you go and uh, you know be um, set a goal for yourself for say fitness and you become fit and you share that with other people or you gain mastery in uh, in uh, in in a certain field by 
maybe you like to paint and you pay, you go and take classes and you do painting and then you display that mm -hmm. that could meet in a more resourceful way and um, I had an example in mind about how to a personal example of how I met my need for significance. It'll come to me later. I will tell you about it. So my question to you at this point is how are you meeting these needs? Because they are needs, they're not wants and desires. And what can you do to be resourceful in fulfilling the unmet needs? So at this point, Nija, I'd like to be able to see the chat box if possible. I, I think I need to stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Okay. So are you uh, wanting the people to put in yes. their comments? Yes. So how are you meeting these needs? And what can you do to be resourceful to meet the unmet needs? So can... Uh, People in the audience listening to Smriti just answer that question on the chat. You can even write it for yourself. Okay. So Venuta says the situations of life are such that not all these needs may be met at the same time. Absolutely. So true. And therefore, what can we do to be resourceful? Useful in that moment to be ready for our future need and therefore feel that we are satisfying uh, that need. Um, yes, Mamta, that's right. So we keep ourselves relevant in the moment. Um, I will, maybe I'll address this question um, a little more, uh, you know, meaningfully at the end of the session. Yeah, so, Deepika says trying to be better, my health and learning new things. And when he also says, first, we need to change our mindset. That's right. So um, I remember, yeah, started running yoga, volunteer work, gardening, learning new things. Yes, exactly. Those are some of the answers that help us. I remember that, um, um, for example, you know, I, when I, some of my examples of, I mean, I want to share from my own life is that uh, there was a time when I was in Muscat and I had this new baby and I literally had no social circle at that time because we were so new to that place. And uh, I, I was just dying to learn something new. I was feeling so stagnated because the baby was also too small to interact with me in any other way other than to eat and sleep. So what I did was I, uh, you know, went to a library picked up a book on uh, how to make soups. You know, I was just learning Western cooking at that time. And I made a soup. Uh, I learned it and I made a soup. And my husband says, wow, that's wonderful. And I guess many of my needs were met, not just one. So, um, you know, at, like, I, ideally I would have liked to be working, but that need was not going to be met. So I found another way to, um, you know, create that significance for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Manisha says trying to keep fit for your family and switching gears. Exactly. So is it okay if I return to the presentation? I'm mindful of the time. Yeah. Smriti, I think you can go back. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share my screen again. Okay. So there is another concept that I want to share with you about liminality. Um, so a liminality is, so if, do you feel like you are drifting, that you are neither here nor there, that you are between and betwixt, that something, you were at a point, you were doing well, it was so good, and now you don't know what's going to happen. That feeling of uncertainty, that state of transition, when we are neither here nor there, that's what is called being in a liminal space. So it comes, the word liminality comes from the word limin. A limin means threshold. And liminal, liminality is being in a state of limbo, of uncertainty. And this comes from, um, it was uh, an anthropologist, Arnold Van Gennep actually wrote about it first. When he talked about, in, in his book, Writes the Passage, where he talks about how, um, you know, in certain tribes, they have rituals where uh, when boys are entering puberty, there's an initiation ritual 
that okay now you are going to be in this phase of development and um, and then they have a, um, a ceremony when they have actually attained adulthood and the idea behind that was that you know now you're free to experiment to do things because you are in that phase of life you haven't got all the answers but if you experiment and you do stuff you will find answers and it's it's about opening up the realm of possibilities and then there was um, uh, a psychologist who victor turner he applied this to other areas of life for example you and me land in a liminal space when we are going to you know when you're going to start a family and we quit our work the all the things that we have known and the position that we had known for ourselves where we were it's now kind of um, you know we are in a state of transition we know that something will happen but we don't know exactly how or what or where now my question to you if you knew what would be your point of arrival while you are in the liminal space what is it that you would do so if you knew that um, uh, before I say that, uh, if you look at, uh, there is also something that I um, believe, uh, believe in, which is the law of the farm. So if we want to eat rice at a certain time and the farmer needs to grow it, uh, maybe three months in advance, I'm not sure exactly how long it takes for rice to grow. But I think it's about that. So if you wanted a tree that gives shade, shade or gives fruit to blossom, we have to the, plant the seed, you know, in time, well in time, so that we get the fruit when we want it. And that we plant the seeds in the, in, while we are in the liminal space. When we are at the point of arrival, have, we will then sow that seed. And there's another thing that I want to talk to you about is that you know, the caterpillar, when, uh, when it is a caterpillar, uh, it, it, is, it already has the cells um, which are the blueprint for it to become a butterfly. But those cells are inactive in the caterpillar. Only when it goes through cures and transformation and grows from a pupa and into a butterfly, that's when those cells come to life. And this relates to... if look at the opportunities that we take up when we are, we are living with uncertainty and you would have experienced this in your life when you tried and see us that made you able to be but for us to uh, nurture that seed and we have to lovingly you know um, uh, make it grow so that when we are at that point when we can make use of it it comes in very useful to you and I will tell you I'll give you an example uh, very often I end up uh, telling myself oh it's so good that I did this before so um, uh, Nija may not uh, didn't mention it but actually after five years of working when I got married I took six years career break and um, my first five years were in finance and when I landed the job with KPMG and believe me um, before I landed a job in KPMG I did many many things when I landed in KPMG I just realized that all the skills that I had built up came in so useful to make me take advantage of the opportunity um, I had uh, because as a profit center I had to run my own um, my, you know budget I had to do my own budgeting I have to take care of finances. If I hadn't done that, then as a learning and development person, I wouldn't have had the, the capability to look at all aspects of my role. So um, I have written this article. If you Google uh, liminality and Smriti, you will find the article. So uh, I hope you do that because I've written in that a lot more detail. Um, so here I am. Now I want you to, uh, so when we talk of potential, I want you to think of all the things that are, uh, that are positive about you. And again, I'm going to uh, put these questions to you and I will uh, then um, stop sharing the screen so that I can see what you're saying. What are the two, three positive things people 
said about you before you took a career who are just so demanding you feel like you can handle anything <laughs> volunteering okay seeing okay manita says develop a sense of resilience seeing a breakthrough uh absolutely venita so i i please keep writing we will take all this in as when we finish the session i'm just keeping time uh uh on mind uh, study with your kids okay uh, okay so you see we are constantly developing strengths we had strengths before and we have strengths now and these trends that you picked up while you've been a break are not something that you would get easily in the corporate world in fact i am so you know six year career break is a lot when i came back to work i noticed that the world had literally changed um there was powerpoint there was this and i i was barely familiar with powerpoint and i had to learn do learning on the quick and most of the time people were about 10 years younger than me and i just let it be i said you know what i'm a mother i have looked after two children and i have learned skills that others could and sure enough in a state of crisis the way i could handle something um, it was just and it was not like i was trying to be something it was just there you already handled so many crises um, if you handle crises between uh, your child uh, jumping off something and hitting themselves and crying and you don't know what to do if you handle that kind of crisis you can handle a lot more stuff on the corporate world um and um it's really served me well in fact people saw me as a mature resource and very often ceos used to talk to me about the problems considering me a senior resource and for me that was satisfying enough i was in my own race i was in no, no rat race and there's another question what is it that you will do if you were guaranteed to succeed if you let those self doubts be relegated to to the back of your mind what will you do if somebody told you you know what you will succeed i want you to write down one sentence that you will do okay manita says biggest sense of satisfaction is prioritizing thing there's no regret with break she vidya says sometimes i think we need to keep moving in spite of hurdles because that is what will help us reach the goal difficult to practice but needs to be done sure it's not nothing is easy just go for it so yeah so you know um very often we spend giving time giving more energy to self doubt etc but if we give energy to focus on our strengths you know there's a person called marcus buckingham he's talked about um he's talked about uh, he's uh, done for something called the strength revolution and he talks about strengths and he says that we need to cultivate our strengths intelligently and that is my wish for you that cultivate your strengths intelligently uh, mega says product and yes so move do productive do things that fire you that excite you that give you a sense of evolving and uh, growing um i'm going to share my screen again and the last thing that i have for you is a story called three feet from gold so this is a true story so in the 19th century there was a lot of gold rush so a lot of people in many countries and um, were in south america in america were looking for gold because that was a quick get rich quick way uh, in a uh, way of looking at things so one person called darby are you darby he and his uncle um, his uncle has the gold fever and they went to the west and they um, they found a place and they started digging after a lot of hard work they actually found a vein of gold in colorado and they were very excited and it was almost seemed like the biggest uh, hall of gold that they would find there and so they quickly went back to their place in maryland and they um, you know took um, loans from people bought a machinery so that they could dig for gold and they went back and they dug for gold and they did get a good haul but then suddenly the gold stopped they couldn't see any more gold and they, the vein just ran out and they kept digging digging and digging and then they couldn't find it and they decided that oh how they, the thoughts that went through their head was how could we even think that there was a solution like this that 
uh, how how can we get rich so quickly it is not possible uh, this is just a mad thing to do and we should just be going back and uh, let's quit and so they had all these self doubts and they decided to quit but they needed to uh, what to do with the machinery so they sold it to a junkie and uh, the junkie um, and they went back and uh, the junkie uh, uh, bought the machine then he thought okay let me get a specialist so he got a mining engineer and the mining engineer came and told him look this is fault lines the vein of gold is in the fault line the fact that it is on fault line is that you will find gold 3 feet below and so they went drilling and drilling and drilling and they did find 3 feet from gold and then it was that junkie made millions and millions in gold and um, uh, he, he um, you know, it, it was a story of uh, uh, Darby and his uncle thinking that, oh my God, we were just three feet away from gold. And to, to not to disappoint you, Darby actually learned his lesson very well. And he uh, went on to become a very famous insurance uh, agent. He sold millions of, um, uh, insur millions of dollars of insurance to people because he had learned his lesson not to quit. So whenever somebody said no to him, he never took no for an answer. So my wish for you is that invest in yourself, stay relevant, don't give up, cultivate your strengths intelligent, intelligently so that you are able, you are not, you know you are just three feet away from gold. You will find it. And so um, in, in the interest of time and to be able to uh, hear some questions, I think um, uh, I will stop here. Oh, that was wonderful, Smriti. Uh, so those of you who would like to ask a question, can you just raise your hand and we'll unmute you. I think it's better to speak out the question than, you know, write on the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just see uh, who raises their hand and we can unmute. Who has the first question? Oh, no one seems to be having a question. So can we have some comments and observations or anything that they would like to share with us? I couldn't have answered all the questions. The time is too short. <laughs> uh, Smriti, we have Anahita here with me from my team. Okay. Has a question. Okay, Anahita, go for it. Many times, uh, you know, women are not able to step out of their house because of uh, commitments of family, small children. Uh, how can you stay at home and still stay relevant, or keep, you know, keeping yourself relevant from within your house? You know, the, um, Anaita, so each one will have a different strategy. So I'm not saying one will work for another. Uh, it has to depends on my interests, my uh, strengths and um, uh, my uh, the amount of time I have available. I mean, um, let me think what I did. So for example, um, you, I, I am taking an online course. So you know, I work as an independent consultant. So I have my own firm. So I don't go to an office and meet many people, but I have a need to connect and I have a need to learn and I have a need to contribute. So I have joined like an online course. Uh, so Coursera right now offers so many courses for a small amount of 2000 rupees. I'm able to learn more in my field from somebody, a professor in Chicago uh, University. So, you know, in today's world, we have even more um, opportunities. That's my way of learning. Uh, for uh, Anaita, what do you think? What might be your way of learning if you were to be at home? Uh, I think even just reading uh, mm -hmm. is, a, is a good way to stay relevant, especially now when you have so many uh, blogs and so much of content, even on social media, you know, you spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes on your phone, not wasting it on uh, Facebook or chatting and instead reading something. That yeah, is absolutely. absolutely. Those who are very busy, they wish they have time to read. And in fact, in my article on liminality, when I talk of the seven steps, I tell people that it's, you know, that is a time, it can be a time for transformation. It's a time of possibilities. It's a, it's, it, there is so much we say, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, I wish I could do that. And that is the time when your wish can really come true. And, um, you know, busy people would love to read, but they're not able to. And that's a perfect way of educating yourselves, keeping yourself calm. 
feeling satisfied with what you are doing great so we have lily with a question so we'll just unmute lily please yeah. go ahead lily Uh, Shruti, it's a really good session. Thank you. I even I am able to understand myself what I am doing. Uh, being in the IT industry for uh, more than six years, sorry, thirteen years, I have up to whatever the work assigned to me. That kind of attitude I have. So I have worked very well in the IT industry. Once after coming out of the IT industry, I want to park myself. Uh, apart from my uh, homemaker, I am doing my activities. But whatever the time I have, the free time, no, I want to park myself in the right way. I have tried with the different different thing, volunteer work, then going out for gym, yoga, and everything. But I never find any satisfaction with it. Right. Then I, then I want to go back to my work. Okay. There, real, what's the problem is the IT industry is very dynamic. Uh, things are going very fast. Hmm. Uh, by uh, by, luckily by reference, I got lot of um, entry calls and everything. But none of them plan to be offered. Then yeah. I started thinking, why should I want to this field search for job and everything? Then I find out that um, really the people who are wanting to hire me as a senior person, I as an experienced person means I want to hold lot of responsibility. That is one challenge I'm having. Mm -hmm. uh, but my previous experiences go and do the work. Whatever assigned to me, I will finish off with the, for my satisfaction and whatever the project is required or organization is required. That is my goal. Okay, now I am not able to park myself anywhere. Okay, the IT job or in the home also, sometimes feel what I am going to do, what I am going to achieve. It. Hmm. So that kind of uncertainty is there. Okay, I tried right. different lot of things. Okay. Right. Thank you, Lily, for sharing. Mm -hmm. And let me give a perspective and maybe mm -hmm. some answer you will get from that. So, you know, if you look at your life, uh, Lily, if you are in your mid-30s or uh, since you're saying 14 years of work you've done, then the, you are in mid-30s. How long do you think you have to live for? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, if, if we sometimes look very, we take a very short-sighted view. I told my husband, I'll start working when you stop working because two careers like his and mine, would not have flourished. So I said, when you start like going heading towards your retirement, I will start becoming much. I put my career on a back burner for 22 years, which did not mean that I didn't develop skills. I continuously developed skills. I did jobs, but I made sure that I was not neglecting the family because it was very important to me. And I, I'm sure it's very important to many of you. So um, when I didn't have a job, I got a qualification and then I was ready for my next job. In fact, I always do every job that I do for my next one, not for the current one. So uh, in fact, Malcolm Glad, but let me not deviate. So, um, you know, um, if we take a long term view, we can say, okay, I have maybe 20 years of more productive work to do. What can I do right now to be able to pick up the thread when I, if I want to. And to your question, I was in a very similar, similar situation, Lily. When I came to Hyderabad, I had to give up my job. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I am a trailing spouse and my husband told me before our marriage that his career comes first and I agreed. So I'm keeping up my work. And also he earns a lot more money than I do and I'd rather let him work hard than me. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, so um, I said, <laughs> said, what am I going to do? So I wanted to work the big, with the big four because I didn't find the environment that I wanted with small firms because I've had a certain experience being all over the world and you know I want certain work ethics and I don't want to go to just to a small company. I had already tried that. But nobody, I tried 100 things before I set up my consulting. And then I remembered my goal. I said, when I'm 50, I want to set up my own consulting. So I, it took courage. It took, uh, you know, questions that can come to you. Oh, who's going to ask you for work? But then I said, I have the skills. I have the experience. Do I really want to give up? No, I don't want to give up. I set up my consulting. And when you start focusing, now I am a master of my time. I have autonomy. I have the flexibility to go and visit my children who don't live with me who are away for a month at a time and still be able to do the quality of work that I want to do. And because I will put 100% in doing the right kind of work, I am able to uh, you know, get the assignments more and more through word of mouth. 
so you will end up so um, you can there's always a way for me the way has been to uh, find my co own consulting not to be managed by incompetent bosses because they will be younger than me they will have less experience of life and i have been um, not mismanaged because i never really let them manage me i managed them <laughs> i said listen um, i do have more life experience even if you're five years younger than me and I can give you, and I've been always a guide to them. So they've always told me, you know, when you go to next place, please do something nice for other people too, like you've done for us. So for it, that gives me my satisfaction. So there is, and I just want to say something, Shrividya. Maybe there is a certain conflict in some of the needs. You have a need for something. Right now, what I'm hearing is there is a need for growth. There is also a need for contribute, and there is a need for significance. You will have to. Um, keep thinking about it till you reach the goal. So you are just three feet away from goal, Shri Vidya. You will find your answer as long as you keep at it. Keep learning, keep doing new qualifications. That's what I do when I go to a new place. That's how I find my network. I find opportunities. I expand my identity and I feel very good about myself. <laughs> so, and you will find the answer. Thanks, Mudi. Uh, Vinita, do you want to ask your question now? Yeah. Hello. Yes, Vinita. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. Firstly, uh, you know, I was uh, a lot of what you said resonated with me. Uh, you know, so I. What What I think happens with me is when I first the first thing that I started doing in life was that I started to unlearn a lot of things started to you know a certain things like demystify uh, and you know uh, debunk a lot of the myths that you know what what i ha what i was like i said i was a taskmaster i was you know very career oriented so once i took the break uh, i thought what really helped me is to you know see things from a very different perspective Absolutely. i really had a change of mindset and in, in a lot of things that i would do uh, and uh, what has really sailed through with me and kept me going is that i have i have remained positive yeah. Today, I and I think Neerja would know. I, any 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 event comes of LinkedIn uh, or, or any event that comes in, I raise my hand and I'm there and I'm registering. Wonderful. But what what happens with that is like you really said, it's nice to go out. It's not just for socializing or networking, but you just learn so many new perspectives. Right. Right. And so, and I always feel that you know something leads to something else. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, so that's one thing. And what I thought I learned really good today was, you know, and I heard you was the the, the way you've class the way the needs, you know, we, we, we've always heard about mass flow, but I like the way the needs have been played out over here and portrayed here. And what is really going to be sticking with me is, and you know, the stickiness is how you said, you know, what, what would you do with your needs, but how are you going to look at it both from a resourceful angle and a non-resourceful angle? So Absolutely. thank you for that. You're yeah. most welcome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you, Vinita. There was Sri Vidya's question also to okay. how to uh, overcome. If, is there any other um, uh, Nirja or I can address? Uh, there is a Vinuta. Uh, uh, Vinita, do you want to go next? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Vinita. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, uh, Smriti. So we were talking about the basic needs. So I had a question at that point in time that, uh, you know, the lives that we live, not all of those basic needs are met also. Sometimes uh, during, once you have a child, um, those needs are like uh, going to the back burner. It's only the child Absolutely. and yourself is totally lost in the process. Yeah. So not only during motherhood or uh, otherwise also. Yeah. So uh, I think mostly women, uh, we tend to put those things aside and... Uh, 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 just move on. Uh, we don't uh, really cater to those needs. Probably that's what, uh, you know, um, gets to a lot of issues later on in our lives. Yes. So my question is, at that given point in time when our basic needs are not met, how do you cope? I mean, can you just, one example probably, to see, uh, to just, you know, imbibe uh, how do we cope at any given point in, in our lives? So, you know, uh, Vinuta, I want to share with you this uh, quote of Helen Keller, which uh, is, you know, she was, a, she, she was a blind, she was deaf, and she could barely speak. And uh, she was a great motivator. She did a lot of things in this world. You would have heard of her. And one of the things she said is that I am, um, so I don't remember the quote exactly, but she said that 
um, I do everything, but I no, I am. Um, I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I would like to take inspiration from that, that all the needs that we have, we cannot do exactly what we want to do. So for example, if you want to um, be learning, uh, you know, going out and doing a course, which makes, which has to, uh, which you have to attend classes, but you can't do that for right now because uh, of your family situation. But remember, my, I had my children with me only for 15 years. After that, they've never, for the last 10 years, they've not been with me. So, you know, we are going to, like you said, Nita, we will become at some point empty nesters. Very few people are lucky to have the children with them, uh, you know, when we are in middle age. And then, what is it that you can do now? Something really small. What is a small goal that you can uh, set for yourself that will help you fulfill in that direction? So, don't bury your needs. You can put them on a back burner which means let it at least be keep warm. And therefore, uh, you know, you might want to do an online course or you might want to, um, uh, you know, connect with a set of people who can come online in a discussion, a discussion every now and then. There could be a book club that you could join that keeps your intellectual need for growth uh, satisfied. I mean, I'm sure in this group, if we ask for one example from each person, everybody will be able to come up with one example. And Vinita, I don't doubt that you already know what you, we believe, uh, and you know, I'm a coach. Uh, I believe that the answers are within you. If I asked you that question, Vinita, that what is it that one thing that you can do that will keep your, um, you know, it's at the back burner, maybe not, you can't give it all your time. What is that one thing that you would be able to do? Okay, I'm a developer by heart, uh, a coder. So I try to keep coding all the time. <laughs> yeah, and it may not be enough at the moment, but remember that there will come a time when your children will not need you. Some of those responsibilities that you have at the moment, they will uh, become small in the amount of time and effort they need. And so you have to keep ready for that time. And... Um, just uh, we don't take a short angle view to this. And there's one thing that I want to address. And uh, Vinita, Vinita I, hope I, I hope that answered your question. Um, so Sri Vidya, um, overcoming self-limiting thoughts due to past experience or conditioning or whatever reasons or how to build more inner strength without having to depend on others. Absolutely, you have put your finger on it because this is what women need to do a lot more of. And I'll just share my screen for a moment. Um, you know, there is, this is precisely for something that like this that I've created this program, which is called Mind Over Matter. And it is about visualizing the future that you want, unpacking your, un, uh, unpacking your limiting beliefs and repackaging them and creating new thinking and behavioral patterns and acting with intent. So a one hour session is very small for me to help you take through step by step, um, uh, you know, to how to unpack those limits. You've taken years to build them. So we need a little time to unpack them and, and to uh, create that mindset shift. So this is one program that I learned and this is inspired from my life, from my beliefs, from, from all the work that I have done and my skills. And if you want, you can look at my website and, um, you know, right now I'm running it in Hyderabad, but I plan to take it to other cities in next two months time. You can just browse through it and see what it is. And in future, you, you can register. I will keep that in mind. And when I have the workshop, I will share the dates with you. So that is just, um, that, that is the response that I can give at this moment. Uh, keeping time in mind, uh, I think we will just take one last question because Mamta has been, you know, putting up a hand for a long time. Mamta, please go for it, and this will be the last question. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Mamta. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ruti, for such a wonderful session. You're welcome. Uh, maybe uh, the question I'm asking is not a question as such, but it might reflect my insecurity. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, regarding that. Most of the times we have been working so much, and suddenly a break. And then you keep on, you always carry that guilt feeling that why I did this, why I take a career break, 
I always have an insecurity that I'm trying to learn a lot of things. But then I again ask the same question, whether I'm on the same path, I'm going in the right direction, whether this is going to help me. And sometimes I fail in those decisions, most of the times actually. I uh, plan up some small goal, but yes, I'm not able to do it because of some uh, uh, unplanned responsibilities again. All right. So all these mix and match of things tend to pull you back and you you then think that, okay, probably I will not be able to do something, whatever I've planned. You feel very low always. Right. From your experience, as you said, you also took a six years break and then you got a best of the opportunity. That is not easy actually to grab that opportunity also. You need that kind of confidence and be on the track. So yeah. from your experience, what would you say, I mean, what we have to do to keep ourselves at that pace? So Mamta, very good question. So, you know, I said I took six years of break. Actually, I wanted to take only four years of break. It took me two years to get something that I could do. And I restarted by actually teaching in a management institute, which was like some th tertiary level of management institute. But I used to work till 1.30 at night to prepare a lecture on financial management. I don't think I studied finance so well in my MBA, which I did when I was teaching it. And uh, so, and then I got a break with, um, uh, to do an assignment with Citibank and I pulled all strings, whoever I could, uh, you know, come, could help me. I said, listen, I need help. And after two years, somebody did help me and I got that assignment and I never looked back. So uh, not only that, uh, my husband actually paid for a, uh, while I was doing this project with Citibank, my husband actually paid for this program with Shift Khera, You Can Win. And that three days of program was so enlightening that I had six years. In my, in my assignment that I got with City, they gave me one line brief. They said, uh, bridge the quality gap between Citibank and its credit card sales associates. And I had six years of enthusiasm inside me. And it translated into three levels of training. And that's when I actually came to learning and development. And that was 20 years back. And there was, so, you know, put one step after another. Don't give up because gold is there. It is within you. Keep your strengths close to you. And always remember, if nobody else will stroke you, you stroke yourself. Pat yourself on the back for the good job that you're doing with, uh, in the current job that you're doing. So uh, you, if you look at the needs, um, there are so your need for, um, I would think your need for significance is not being met. There is a certain um, a need for evolution and growth that is not being met. So how can you address the, with this additional awareness that these are the basic needs and you please go on internet and read more about it. Google Tony Robbins. He's very, he's very good. Look up his videos. Um, uh, you know, he, he's a master. So uh, in uh, neuro linguistic programming find your path by doing incrementally and there's something I want to share with you that you know when we look at the standards of most beautiful women and this is again Tony Robbins talking about it the most beautiful women you know, from difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that um, the height between the nose and the top of the lip and the, the height of our eyes if they're equal it changes you from being ordinary to extraordinary. So a lot of models actually come to cosmetologists and get that change done. Sometimes it's just one mm change to shift you from ordinary to extraordinary. So what I'm going to say to you, all you need to do is one more mm of change in the moment. And a year later, or two years later, you would be so, you would have had transformation. You don't have to do all the change in the moment. Thank you. Wonderful, Smriti. I think, uh, you know, those last words, one mm of change really, really matter. And uh, I also, you know, kind of uh, will vouch for it. Uh, it's, it's not difficult. Uh, it may look like that, but keep at it. Definitely, there will be the outcomes that you desire. It's a question of time. Uh, uh, so thank you, Smriti, and thank you, audience. Uh, it was a wonderful session today. And as I mentioned, two of you would be uh, getting a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Smriti soon. 
uh, we would like to know who would be interested in availing this and then we will also make a selection based on the participation today. So please do drop an email. Uh, I'm sure all of you received an email with the link to today's webinar from Sapna. So please respond to that email ID if you are interested in availing the session and we will communicate who those two uh, women are who would get to talk to Smriti soon. Uh, please respond before um, close of business today, whatever that is, because I will take a look at the emails tomorrow morning. So uh, I will pick up uh, from that list. Yeah. Um, Anisia, thank you so much for coordinating this and inviting me for this. I just want to ask all those people who had um, an interesting session and they felt that it helped them. I want them to be able to leave comments on the uh, Inkher website. Uh, this is to make sure that we can um, you know, reach out to more women uh, who might be feeling similar things that you are feeling and uh, that we can get a sense of um, what we would need to change, if anything. So um, I'm sure Nija's team will get in touch with you and as to where you can do that. Yes, sure. Nija? Yeah, I can. I can do that. Manita, it is not a link. There was, there should have been an email that you received, which gave you the link to this webinar. So please respond to that email ID. Thank you, everyone.